Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to My Hero Academia Season 5, Episode 18. So, it's hard to believe we're already getting this close to the ending of this season. Because this season is 25 episodes. Like, all of the seasons except Season 1 have been. And... That means there's like, what, six episodes left to go? Six, seven episodes left to go? It's hard to believe we're already near the end, but I'm enjoying it. We're already in the latter part of it for sure, and it's definitely proving to be a really great season. Um, the character development has been fantastic, um, and there's been a lot of good just story growth as well. But it's not over. And we're still going along with training with Endeavor and everything right now. Although, last episode we had a little bit of a break in the actual training to show um, our young heroes having dinner with Endeavor and his family. And getting to meet Todoroki's uh, brother and sister and all. And it, it was amazing for character development. It, it was really a fantastic episode, it really gave a lot of great depth to all of these characters, really. It, it, it's also showed how far some of these characters have come, such as Deku and Bakugo, even. Um, and it shows that all of them still have room to improve further. And I like that. I, I think that's fantastic. So I assume we're going to get back into the actual training this episode. Um, I'm just wondering how long this arc is going to last, because I've heard it's supposed to be small. And the next arc is supposed to take up the entire second, like, back half of this season. Um, because this arc and the next arc were actually switched around in the anime from where they were in the manga. So the next arc was actually supposed to already be happening, and this arc was supposed to be afterwards. But I guess they switched around because of story or... Because possibly, like, it would make more sense this way. I don't know. Um, but we're still supposed to be getting the next arc this season. Um, and I'm definitely interested to see what that is. I assume it just still has more to do with the Meta Liberation Army. And considering we got a glimpse at something before with the, that, that guy screaming and everything in the middle of, like, all of this destruction... I assume it's going to have to do with that. Um, now, I have seen some reactions, by the way. And apparently some people are saying that Shigaraki, who's screaming like that. And it's like, maybe at the vaguest sense I can see that, but it doesn't look like Shigaraki to me. So if that is Shigaraki, something has to have happened. Something, like, notable would have to have happened, because it doesn't look like him to me. But maybe that's just me. And it's not just because, you know, he's not wearing his typical outfit and everything. And he's, like, screaming and looks more psychotic than ever. It's not even because of that. It's just, I don't know. Even the hair color looks slightly different. I don't know. It might be, and maybe I'm just trying to find excuses because I didn't, like, put that together at first. But I don't know. For some reason, just it, he didn't read that way to me. He didn't, like, read to me as Shigaraki. But... We'll see. We'll see. Either way, um, he, he's going to clearly have something to do with what's coming up. They, they wouldn't just, I feel like, have this big uh, moment for him doing that if they're not going to deliver on it by the end of the season, honestly. Um, a setup like that would have to, have to be delivered on pretty quickly. Like, the idea of a, of a traitor, a spy within the school, 
is something a little harder to deliver on quickly. That's something that can definitely be built up a lot more and, and definitely be, have, uh, be like thought about and like figured out exactly how it's going to work before actually revealing it. But this is something that would, it, it's definitely, it's clearly meant to be revealed soon. It's like when you watch a movie and it's like at the beginning of the movie, you're seeing what happens at the end and then it goes back and shows you everything that led up to that point. Breaking Bad does that in the first episode too. So some shows do it, obviously. But yeah, it's like, it's like that kind of trope. And, and that's what it felt like to me. That felt like that's going to be where this season ends pretty much. Not like necessarily the very final episode or whatnot, but that's with him in the rubble there laughing and all that, that's going to be like about the end of the season. And that everything else is leading up to that now. So that's my theory whether it's Shigaraki or not. Uh, but again, uh, there are multiple people who have said that they think it is, I guess. So maybe it is. And maybe I'm just a dum-dum. Um, but yeah, I, I'm definitely interested to see what more they do with this season, if, if this is how it's going to go, if we are going to get that second arc and everything. I'm just wondering, like, what is actually going to happen to lead to that? Where is this going to go? I don't know. And Shigaraki is shown in the opening. So maybe it is him. Mm. I don't know. We'll see. We will see. I I'm definitely... I'm definitely interested, though. Because this is going to be really interesting. The opening makes it look like everything's going to be really interesting. <laughs> and it's already really interesting. Because the stuff going on in the background with Hawks working with the League of Villains and the Metal Liberation Army, uh, the information we're finding out about their plan and all, it's like, yeah, I'm excited to see what we get from that. Oh, we're, we're having quite a bit of buildup. I want to see the payoff. So we're going to get on with it, check out this episode, see what we got in store, and hope for the best. So, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black, and then fades back in. Also, how long has my camera been dead? I really apologize for that. I, I'm really sorry for that. I didn't even notice. Um, it'll be fixed for the reaction and everything, so really sorry about that. Um, that completely threw me off my groove as well. Um, I'll see you at the reaction. Um, yeah, sorry. And we are back and we'll begin with spoilers in three, two, one, now. So another really phenomenal episode. Um, just, I'd say possibly even better than last week's, just because of, like, a lot of the meaning and depth behind it. Um... So after leaving the family house, um, Natsu is kidnapped by this villain we briefly saw before, I believe, in a post credit sequence. Um, this villain who wants Endeavor to kill him because he's insane, and apparently Endeavor arrested him seven years ago, and he, like, I guess wants Endeavor to be the way he used to be, like, where he was super aggressive and everything or something. It's weird. It's weird. But finding out about everything as uh, Endeavor and his driver are taking the kids back to the school, uh, they find out by w when this villain, um, whose name is Ending, I believe, um, is just straight up, like, he, he straight up basically attacks them. He, he goes at them in, in, while they're in their car um, because he wants Endeavor to kill him. He wants this confrontation. And at first Endeavor goes, goes for him, but he hesitates because of his son being used. He, he doesn't want to hurt his son. He doesn't want anything to happen to Natsu. 
um, especially because of what happened to Toya. So with some assistance from the students, he has to try and save Natsu. And his hesitation cause, it makes it so that the students have to do all the work, but they show drastic improvements through it. We see Deku using what he's learned to be able to use and control Black Whip, um, saving a bunch of people in their cars who were thrown off um, by ending. Bakugo uses the precise control for his quirk, allowing him to utilize speed and precision to be able to save uh, Toya from getting hit by what looked like a train. And I love what Bakugo said in that moment, too. It's like, because ending is like, more people are going to die if you don't do something endeavor, something along those lines. Bakugo saves Toya, and it's like, no, no one will. And it's like, Bakugo, you're just proving more and more why you're one of my favorite characters in this series. And it's like, this is, this is amazing. Because seasons one and two, Bakugo would have never said something like that. I'd even go as far to say up to season three. He would have never said something like that. We know Bakugo's always wanted to legitimately be a hero. But he's still, it's because of his growth that he's, he's fully, like, embracing that more. That he's even embracing a more heroic attitude about things. Yes, he's still very aggressive. Yes, he's still a, a jerk. But he's become so, more, so, so much more heroic in these past couple seasons. And this is a great culmination of that. Showing him not only working with Endeavor to truly fix his flaws, acknowledging that he has flaws that need to be fixed, especially in the winter. Um, he's not only working to fix those flaws and succeeding, but he's actually being more heroic in his attitude. Like, he even checks in really quickly after everything happens. He's like, what about the chalk line guy? And Todoroki's like, I got him. He's like, damn Deku, what about, what about the mobs? I, he, he's still being aggressive. He's still being uh, volatile. But he's, his thought was to check in on everything, to make sure everything went well, to make sure that it all worked out. And yeah, he, he goes excessively smug afterwards. Um, and it's like, what do you think of us now, Endeavor? <laughs> But still, the fact is, we're seeing how heroic he, he, he's being, and I love it. Um, and Todoroki, Todoroki is working on improving his quirk and his quirk output and, and ability to switch between the two sides of his quirk a lot quicker and whatnot, which we see in action here, switching between his fire to the ice really quickly. Um, as he captures ending. So it's just, it's really interesting. It's really interesting not just to see their growth, but to see Endeavor's growth in this too. Because after everything is fixed, Endeavor just having no more hesitation just embraces his son. He was so afraid he was going to lose him like he did with Toya. And... So he embraces him and makes sure that he and Bakugo are all right. He was so scared. And you could see it in his face. He was absolutely terrified that he was going to lose another son. And so afterwards, he and Toya have a talk. Toya's still saying he can't just forgive him. But we also see those flashes of when Deku told him, it's like, you're trying to find a way to do so. You're trying to get there. And it's very clear that this is true. With the tears in, in, in Natsu's eyes, I think I said Toya again. Um, I'm talking about Natsu here. Endeavor and Natsu have a talk. <laughs> uh, but with the tears in Natsu's eyes and everything, with the way he's talking, it's very clear that he's... He's definitely on the path of forgiving his father. 
he's definitely getting there. But he, he, he's right that he can't just openly forgive him for everything he's done. It's completely valid because all the shit that Endeavor did was absolutely horrible. Absolutely. But the fact that Endeavor is going this hard to fix things, that we're, we're actively seeing him try to change. I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I am fully on board with the idea that anybody can change. I am fully on board with the idea that everybody deserves second chances, even the worst of the worst criminals. Should they be punished for their crimes? Of course. Of course, without question. But do they deserve the chance to change if they truly mean it and truly will put in the effort and work to do so? 100%. And that definitely goes for Endeavor here. He, he abused his children. He acknowledges that he is good as killed Toya. He is fully on board with this idea that he was the bad guy. He, he knows it just as well as everyone else. And that's why he's putting in so much effort to change. And so he's made up his mind on how he's going to work to atone the next step he's going to take. For that. As we see in the after credits scene, he's going to get a new home for his family. For Fuyumi, for um, Natsu, and for Rei when she is discharged, which should be soon. But as his dream has made him, made him believe, he can't be there. That home is for his family, for Rei, for Natsu, for Fuyumi, and even for Todoroki when he's not at school. But he can't be there. To truly atone, he has to separate himself from them for at least a good time. He's going to remain behind at the old family home, the one that holds so many bad memories, which is the reason why he's getting the new home for them, because this one holds so many bad memories. He's going to remain behind and continue to work on his, on his changes. And maybe one day he will be at that table with his family, laughing and smiling and talking about the day. But he's not ready yet. And I can respect that. It, it's a really tough decision and it's hard, but I can respect it because... After everything he had done, I think it's the right move to take a step back and just separate yourself from them for the time being. You, you were the issue. He was the issue. He needs to be away from them. He needs to give them a chance to heal on their own first before he can just try to fix his own standing. I actually think this is a smart move. And it's going to be hard for, for Fuyumi. It will be. We know how much Fuyumi wants this family back to normal. And if that's going to happen, this has to happen. I think that this is the right move. Um, but yeah. Yeah. This episode was clearly closing out this arc. So we're going to be moving into the next arc uh, after this, which... A lot of fans are excited for, and I, I have been spoiled on what the name of the arc is, so I at least know something about it. <laughs> um, but yeah. I'm definitely interested to see where this all goes with the Todoroki family, though, because I am, I'm just, I've become super invested in all of this. I'm excited to see maybe more of their training in the future because it, it was said that they're going to still work with Endeavor uh, like two days a week and on weekends and stuff. Um, but it's like, I, I really want to see more stuff with Endeavor and his family in the future. 
And considering I know there's been some foreshadowing because of another spoiler I unfortunately have heard about. I, I don't know all the details about, but I have heard about it. Um, I do know there's been some foreshadowing in these past couple episodes, so there is that too. It sucks when people on Twitter don't tag their spoilers as spoilers, so you end up getting spoiled on things that seem like pretty big fucking deals, too. But yeah. Um, but yeah, so that should be ending this arc, I assume. It, it definitely seems like the closure to this arc, just based on everything. <laughs> um, and, and that means that hopefully... We're going to end out this season really strong, like people are expecting, like, uh, because this next arc is super excessively hyped up. Again, I, I know the title of the arc, but that's all I know about it. Um, so I'm very excited to see what happens during it. Um, especially because I do know what the title, and the title's pretty cool. And I do, I, I am excited or um, what's going to happen because of all the hype surrounding it, too. Well, so we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. There was another villain, I believe, who was in a post-credits thing, so maybe he'll show up. Um, one that was voiced by Kazuya Nakai. Um, I, I think it was a few episodes ago. I'd have to look that up again. Um, but yeah, he, he was shown as well. Because um, I don't think it was this guy. Because that definitely didn't sound like Kazi and the Kai. Um, I could I could look up uh, real quick. All I have to do is like look up his name and My Hero Academia. No, no, that yeah, it was the blue guy. I'm thinking of uh, this this that blue guy with like who who's in the big old cloak. See, that's all I needed to look up. Um, um, yeah, we still haven't seen him, so maybe we'll see him going forward, though I don't think he's in the opening much, so maybe not. I don't know. Um, but I, but I am excited for him because Kazuya Nakai, he's, I mean, one of my favorite voice actors of all time, so, um, we'll see how it goes. In the meantime, tell me in the comments below, what did you think of this episode of My Hero Academia? And once again, I do apologize for the issue we had in the pre in, in the pre thoughts of this uh, redirect. Um, I don't know why my camera has been do having troubles like that lately, but at least it didn't do that during the reaction, you know. So thank you so much either way. And for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.